In December of 2019, the world watched as a pandemic caused by a novel coronavirus impacted the city of Wuhan in Hubei province in China. By January of 2020, the city of Wuhan was under lockdown and an outbreak of SARS-CoV-2 was declared. Thereafter, the World Health Organization declared a public health emergency of international concern. In the Philippines, the first three confirmed cases of COVID-19 were reported. And before we knew it, a global pandemic had occurred and we saw how countries struggled with data and analytics to combat the epidemic. For this episode, we will look into the importance of data, data analytics, and information technology in the fight to test, trace, treat, and isolate cases of COVID-19. This is Dr. Teddy Herbosa, your host for Health Issues here at PVUP. Our guest in this episode is a graduate of the Philippine Military Academy and is the first female signal officer of the Armed Forces of the Philippines. She is a certified ethical hacker and has a master's degree in information systems at the University of the Philippines Open University. She was assigned as a close-in of three Philippine presidents and before she became the uh, head executive assistant of the National Task Force for against COVID-19. Viewers, it is my pleasure to introduce Lieutenant Colonel Francel Margaret Tabor Lupa. Francel? Hello, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon to everyone. Welcome. Welcome to TVUP. So, uh, tell us, Francel, how did you get involved in uh, cybersecurity? Um, sir, you said a while ago when you introduced me that I am a signal officer. So, after graduating from PMA, I joined the Signal Corps, which is the Communications, Electronics, and Information Systems Service of the Armed Forces of the Philippines, basically uh, in the Army. So, from there, sir, when I uh, joined the Army, I was designated as the Chief uh, Information Systems Management Division. So, there we were developing a lot of systems to be used Army-wide and AFP-wide. And then I transferred to, uh, I was reassigned to the Presidential Security Group. And during uh, one stint where we were in a presidential engagement, we noticed that in that engagement, there were security breaches, particularly in um, uh, hacker attacks that were conducted against um, accounts of our, um, of, from the Office of the President. So it was like an eye-opener for our group commander. And so since I was a signal officer, I was designated to undertake training, such as the Certified Ethical Hacker course. And from there, we developed our own data center for PSG. We also set up our own um, classrooms. And we set up shop for our own repairs. Because you know there's like a security breach when you bring computers uh, for repair outside. And so they can it's vulnerable to being copied for whatever it is that's in your hard drives. So we set up all of that. And then on top of it, we recruited IS graduates, fresh graduates to train and be part of a pool of uh, programmers, technicians, uh, in all sorts, be it in the telephone lines, uh, computers, and um, CCTV. So you developed basically a whole uh, cyber army of people to make sure we can uh, defend ourselves against cyber attacks, correct? Yes, sir. Because now it's uh, data is the new currency, sir. So we really have to protect our data. I, I also know that you give out uh, uh, consultancy talks to other countries as well. You're invited to other countries to speak on the issues of cyber security. Uh, yes, sir. Um, it started when I was uh, invited by uh, then Mayor Herbert Bautista to speak in the uh, Quezon City Smart City Summit. And so I was um, designated to speak about cybersecurity because sometimes um, when we have applications, they, al they always almost uh, test for functionality. So they will be testing and testing whether this thing that they developed worked. So at the back of it, they were not aware of the security settings. So there are 
there poses a vulnerability for attackers. So that brings us to your current job as head executive assistant and also the, the chief uh, information officer for the national task force. So you basically now vet and review all applications for volunteer information systems to combat the, this pandemic. Can you tell us more about that uh, job description? Um, sir, ever since we set up shop here at the National Incident Command, um, of course, the, the world came to a halt in terms of, you know, services and everything. So every, all of the attention pulled down to COVID-19. So this um, IS companies tried to join the bandwagon by offering their services, their systems that are in place for the use of the National Task Force because everybody wants to you know, give a helping hand in order to combat this pandemic. So with this, sir, we are trying to review in coordination with uh, the ICT. Um, Correct. Those who are volunteering their services, whether um, they can be part of the solution to uh, the, the goals that are set forth by the National Task Force. Okay. So could you describe to our viewers what are some of these uh, unique applications that are coming to us and uh, offering solutions to our problem of the COVID-19 pandemic? Um, first of all, sir, we have to take into consideration our plan. So the, according to our uh, National Task Force Chief Implementer, we have to uh, test, trace, and treat. So that's the treat. So because of, the, because of that, sir, in that platform, that is also where our efforts will revolve in. So in terms of testing, um, first of all, we have to see um, what our capabilities in terms of testing, how many laboratories do we have, how far um, can yeah. the laboratories be able to cater in terms of uh, vicinity. And, you know, if, for example, are, you're living in a far away, far flung area, and it takes you eight hours to get to a laboratory, then right. the, the test samples would not be that accurate already. So we are trying to put in systems in order to be able to determine which parts of the country should be able to put up uh, new uh, laboratories so that the test samples will be there on time and be tested accordingly. And so it will, it will give us a better turnaround time in terms of testing. Also, sir, from that, when we know, when we already tested and we know whether you are positive or not, if you are positive, then we have to trace who are those people who have you, have you been in contact with, how far have you gone, how many people have been around you. So we have to have a um, tracking system. In place. Tracing system, correct. Are the hospitals capable of having COVID cases? How many is their air bed capacity and all that? So it boils down into not just applications for uh, testing, tra tracking, and treating, but also inventory systems. You know, um, test kits coming in first in, first out. How many do we have in stock and everything? And all of this sort of will boil down into having an integrated system where we can give data to our. Um, our leaders for them to have, you know, um, timely and accurate. So, Francel, I think the uh, the Pintig lab was already used in the Ebola outbreak by UNDP. Is that correct? Um, yes, sir. So they deemed that it was um, a very good start when they when they deployed it, deployed it before. So now they want to um, use it again for COVID this time. So. But this time, sir, they want to join to enjoin more systems in place because Correct. you know because of the time time spent um, from Ebola to now, there are more systems that, that have been developed as well. So the more systems that you enjoin in the system, then the more data that you can process and be able to uh, come out with you know dashboards to be able to uh, 
assess the situation at hand. Yes. So, so that's your use, no? The for the National Incident Command and the Emergency Operations Center. Your value are dashboards of data, correct? These are yes. visualization, visualization of data. Can you tell us more about how data is visualized? Um, sir, when we um, integrate the systems, we get um, different data sets from different databases. So with this, sir, we integrate all of them in a particular dash dashboard based on what are the needs of specific task groups. So for example, sir, we're speaking about um, task group of resource management and logistics. So they will be more concerned about, about logistical assets. So their dashboards Correct. will be um, tailor-fitted to what they need. So it's more on a, in, of an inventory system. How many test kits arrived? How many are in place? How many are stored? Which ones came in first? So that those are the ones that we're going to deploy um, earlier as well. Those first in, first out. And Correct. Also, sir, we would be able to know whether we have enough test kits to cater to the needs of the whole country. So that is the dashboard for the resource management and logistics. And then they will be also they'll also be able to see the military planes that are flying, the assets, how much is their capacity, how how many can they transport at any given time. Correct. So all of those things, those are for, for the resource management and logistics. But in terms of for us here sorry, in the headquarters for say from the office of the chief implementer, we have a bigger dashboard and it caters to a decision making process. So it's more so, on data analytics on a level correct. of the national already, not not on the uh, not on fragmented uh, data. So, so you're saying in the command center, it's more like a decision support tool. So the, the different sources of data consolidated into a dashboard, like a dashboard of your car, where you know your speed, you know your uh, gasoline is empty or something like that, right? So your yes, lights sir. are open or not, correct? Right? So yes, that's sir. the dashboard at the center. And then the task groups, like the resource management, they would want to know their stock supply, how many yes. they have to procure, what, which hospitals are lacking PPEs, which lab tests are lacking uh, RNA extractor, and all of that stuff, right? So are, are yes, this all set up already or fragmented still? Still, sir, at this point in time, it's still fragmented because um, we are waiting for the ICT to, to vet for the systems. But we do have, um, we have been eyeing particular systems already that we know can be very vital to our operations. So... Hopefully, sir, in the next, uh, in the coming days, we'll already, we'll already be able to set up shops for, for this because, you know, time is of the essence. And we Cor really want, you know, real time and accurate data because we have Cor to know, sir, whether there is also integrity of the data. Uh, it's not just data coming in from all over, but we have to make sure that our decision is based on data that was uh, that, that that has integrity so you want the uh, IT or information technology to help us in terms of accuracy of data and real time uh, quickness the limp, the quickness of data so that our decision makers can make the correct and proper decisions correct yes sir no. so let, let me ask you what are the interesting applications that you have seen being offered to the national task force um, sir, at this point in time, I think we are not um, we are not to mention particular companies. Okay. But okay. I'm no, no. But the, just the application just, itself. Uh, Don't mention the company. Uh, yes, sir. But, but the, I, the, the solution, the oh, solution they yes, offer. Yes, sir. That yeah. solution. So um, a while ago, say, sir, I said about um, um, test, track, trace, and treat. So in ter terms of test, sir, we have a particular company who is already um, renowned worldwide, and their systems are already being used um, by a lot of um, prominent companies as well. It used to be a um, treat, an app to track your employees. For example, you Correct. have employees that are de deployed in field settings, then you, 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 you can be able to see, to see through the system, through the application, whether they're already actually in the field at that particular time. So Correct. They, you'll be able to take a picture of you know the setting where you are in the field and the time that you were there. 
So we'll just tailor fit all of these systems to be for COVID. So instead of mm. tracking an employee that is in the field, we are now trying to tra trace those positive. who have been identified who have been positive with COVID-19. Or exposed, so, correct. Sir, so it's just um, simply working the database settings, like the naming conventions and all, and it's good correct. to go. And it's, also, and it's very uh, interesting be because yes, it creates what they call a geofence, right? He, he, yes, he claimed sir. like a sir. electronic geofence. It's virtual, but you can contain the person in one, in one geographic area because Correct, of that uh, proven system. Yes, sir. So, so it, say, it, it doesn't spread the virus to other places. You can check it. Sir. So if we say that um, they will only be within the vicinity of their house, say, for example, we allot uh, 500 meter radius, then if they go out of the 500 meter radius line, we, the, the application will, will alert us that they are out of their boundaries. So right. something to that effect, sir. So um, that would, I think, sir, would be very useful. And another one is an application also developed by doctors. Um, uh -huh. At this point, sir, um, we from the military um, accept that we are not scientists. And so uh -huh. we need uh, you know, you need the expertise of those who really know what they're doing in this in this uh, in this war. It's 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 a war on on health. So correct. Um, that's why, sir, we have um, we have commissioned um, resident doctors as advisors to be able right. to give our chief implementer a good grasp of what is really with what is really happening um, in terms of. Uh, in terms of the, the, of the of the illness that this pandemic uh, poses, so with that, sir, um, this school of doctors developed a system which is a um, an application that will track um, the testing capacity. So yes, yes, um, it's a, yes. So, so uh, since they, it's like a playbook. They described it as a playbook yes, sir, or something. It's a, it's, a playbook. It's a playbook. So I think playbook sir, pandemic also, playbook. Yeah. Yes, sir. So I think that is also another one that we should oh, be interesting solution. integrated to that. And over and above that, sir, of course, we have the GIS. Um, yes. We have the mapping. Um, mapping. That's really very important because everything we can see on the map, you know, locations of particular individual, uh, afflicted uh, individuals, locations, um, and, you know, the, the numerics are really, really very important. You know how many are affected in a particular barangay, particular municipality, and all that. And that will aid our decision makers to see and to state whether um, lockdowns will, can still be imposed. Can still be approved. Yes, sir. Uh, and also, Franzel, the uh, Bayong uh, UP Resilience Institute and their modelers actually do computer modeling and uh, projections that. Uh, the National Task Force also utilizes in its briefing. Tama ba? Yes, sir. Uh, 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 Dr. Ted, um, at this point in time, um, I think that this is really very important that we commission those uh, from the government. Because, sir, I believe that the UP team has been into this um, research for a very, very long time. And so they were able to already gather sufficient data and relevant data um, not just not just for this pandemic, but for whatever uh, disaster or crisis that we will face. So, um, because of this, sir, that data that was already collated for for n number of years could be could be very could, could be very useful in this in this in these times of crisis because you know we can um, we can be able to identify um, our support system as well and. With that data, sir, that was already collated um, years before, um, it would it would give us a, an idea of historical historical considerations. And um, I think, sir, at this point, at, at this point that we are battling an um, invisible enemy, um, having the right data and analysis is is very is very crucial. So I think, sir, those that are very uh, that are from the government, especially from UP, sir, are really experts in this field. And so we have to put our trust in them that um, they're really doing um, their utmost to provide us with um, solutions um, 
recommendations on, to, on possible solutions for this pandemic. So I think so that Correct. They, they should really, really be, um, they should really be playing uh, uh, a significant role in in the data analysis for 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 the laboratory that we're trying to build. So Correct. I um I highly suggest, sir, that in this um in this effort of the DICP for the UNDP project to put uh, UP UP and their team on board because actually, sir, yeah. um. As I, I have noticed, because I have also from the faculty of the information science and inform, information systems, um, I've noticed how UP has already uh, have, uh, have trying to um, revolutionize their information systems for, for so long. So, um, again, this year, nagalitin natin siya and actually utilize what has already been um, what has already been tested and proven for so many years. Uh, I'm glad you raised that because uh, there are issues of data ownership and data privacy with the volunteers that have been coming into place. Can you explain that risk? And you even gave me an example of the data in China that was hacked eventually by hackers, right? Uh, the uh, contact tracing data in China was hacked. Can you expound on this risk that uh, we probably will face if we are not careful? So, Dr. Ted, dapat kasi ang may-ari talaga ng data is yung Philippines, yung government natin. Kasi sir, nagkapa at bumangon na tayo sa pagkakamali niyan. There was an issue sir last time um, with NDI. They commissioned sir a third party entity to you know, gather all of the of our, of our Philippines data pang NDI clearance. And then after a few years sir, nag, natapos yung kontrata. And then when the next bidding came, hindi yun ang nanalo. It's a different company. So the old company, they took the, all of the data. So, mapapansin nyo nun, sir, there was a problem before na sobrang haba ng pila just to get an NDI clearance because we lost all of those data. So, kanina, sir, sinabi ko that data is currency. For example, sir, yes. uh, Philippines, we are 106 million strong or more. Diba, sir? Say, for Correct. example, just, just for the name, name lang, sir, first name or just the whole name. If I sell it for one peso each, because I have a yes. database of all the names of Filipinos, I have 106 million pesos. Yes. So, ganun siya ka importante, sir. So, every data that we put in, anything, sir, our birth dates, our cell phone numbers, our addresses, those are all currency. It can be sold. So, ang tinuturo ko dyan, sir, eh, parang tayo, sir, we have, Kayo, Dr. Ted, I think you have a Yahoo account, Yahoo yes. Mail. So, kung may Yahoo Mail ka, sir, how can you know if your data has already been compromised? Compliance. So, for example, sir, you go to OLX.com and you try to buy a car, a second-hand car. So, you can search ka, sir, you wanted a car. And then, if you go to your Yahoo Mail, sir, you will notice at the sidebar at the right side. Advertisement ng kotse. <laughs> So how right. did Yahoo know that you were looking for a car? You go to Facebook, sir, and it's the same thing. At the right, right side of the panel, there will be car car, car advertisements. So ganun siya, sir. Ibig sabihin, sir, at any point in time, when you access any of these three, uh, three sites, they got your data. So, ang sinasabi nga namin, sir, there's no such thing as a free lunch. It's right. given to Facebook is free. But Facebook, sir, actually has a lot of, a lot, lots, lots and lots of data. So, sir, na, nasabi ko sa inyo, Dr. Ted, the other day, na if you post something on Facebook, even if you delete it a minute after or immediately, it will always be there. It's, it, it's, it's never going to be deleted on the database. So, ang sabi nila, sir, not post anything on Facebook when you're emotional. Kasi, sir, uh -huh. hindi, um, pagka, sir, ano, pagka nag-job interview ka, they can open your Facebook and see your tendencies, diba, sir? Correct. If you're, you know, you're emotional, how you post, how you rant, and all that. And there's this site, sir, called archive.org. And if you go to archive.org and you place that date and time, anything that was that was posted anywhere in the world wide web is there. So there's wow. no such thing as a deleted, deleted item on the net. Wow. 
So, so that, that's that's very important. That's very important information. Yeah, so, so and that's it, that's the issue as well with contact tracing because in contact tracing, you give all your personal data where you live, your birthday, your address, right, your phone number, contact details, email will be all in one place. And if it gets hacked, that's it, right? Your your identity can be stolen. Your bank account, your laptop can be controlled. So that's really scary, right? So we need to be secure. Yes, sir. Uh, so yun, sir, no, we have to we have to really uh, look into the security of the system that we put in place, especially now because everything is working on the notion that it's emergency. Correct. Yes, so uh, I remember in one of our uh, meetings with DICT, you were presenting an enterprise architecture of how data would flow to the command center, to the ICT warehouse, from all the other people that will ask it. Can you describe to our viewers what an enterprise architecture is? Um, in a nutshell, sir, when we say enterprise architecture, it's like a cohesive, uh, cohesive system wherein you'll be able to visualize what your end goal is. So, yun nga, sir, yung sinasabi natin kanina, um, you get all of these systems, you integrate them by using different tools, and then you come up with the dashboard. So, yung, ang end goal natin, sir, is a dashboard for visualization para, sir, kahit hindi ka ganun ka techy, hindi ka ganun ka, ka, you know, ka immersed into a particular uh, setting, madali ka, sir, makakita ng how you would decide, how you would, how you would move forward. So, it actually sets a tone um, and gives a, a clearer picture on how um, agencies, you know, um, would, would would be able to go about their 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 daily tasks, and not just that, they would also be able to um, have a visualization on how they would plan ahead uh, for 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 future undertakings. Correct. You, we were at the uh, Philippine Red Cross, and uh, I showed you the uh, command center of the Philippine Red Cross. Uh, can you tell me more about uh, what they've been able to build and uh, how it works out to help their uh, nationwide operation? Um, so in the Red Cross, um, I attended one of the conferences in uh, the GIS. Um, so they're heavy, sir, on the on the GIS. They plot yes. the map. Um, they have a map, um, and then they plot everything on the map. So with that map, so when they, when the Senator Gordon looks at the map, he's being, he's he's going to be able to see where uh, volunteers are. So, for example, sir, um, like Typhoon Haiyan. Yes. Because, sir, uh, when Typhoon Haiyan hit, lahat sila are victims. Even volunteers, even hospital Correct. people, even policemen. Even the military, people, yes. They're all victims. So, yes. anong nakita natin doon, sir? Dapat, sir, sa mapa, napaplot na natin kung sino yung pinaka nearest that can react. So if this particular place is devastated, ito pa lang lugar na to, siya yung pinakamalapit na pwedeng umaksyon. Siya yung pinaka yes. yes sir. So ngayon sir looking at that with this pandemic, we are proposing to have rapid response teams. So pwede tayong huh? makita up sir sa, sa sa Red Cross with that because the Correct. Red Cross sir, they can see on the map where their ambulances are. Where, where their where their assets are, where their assets yes, sir. are. MVP, their boat, where their, their assets are. Uh, ambulances. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, sa atin sana, sir, kung meron nag-register nag, nag na meron siyang symptoms, ang unang magre-react, sir, ano, sir, Barangay Health Center. Sasabihin nila, okay, with your symptoms, I think there is a possibility that you have COVID. So, if you do, you are going to be, you are going to be um, sent to a testing facility. So, pag Correct. test ka, sir, and then you are, you, you come out positive, you are then sent to a um, quarantine facility. Quarantine facility. Yes, yes. sir. So, lahat sana yun, sir, smoothly done. From the barangay yeah. level uh, and the rapid response team, sir, they're the ones who's gonna conduct this. The testing, you know, put, bringing the test kit to the to the, uh, to the nearest laboratory. So, dapat sila 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 ng trip noon. Yeah, very similar to how we used to travel when I'd like to take a vacation with my family. I book everything online from the air, airplane to the airport transfer to the hotel 
to the tours that I will take and even the restaurants where I will be choosing are all done online. So maybe something yes, with that uh, continuity, no? different activities, but you can be doing it from one, one, one computer and one tablet yes, or one phone. So yes, we hope sir. to get to that level in the near future, right? As of now, all these systems are in different places and are not yet interoperable, right? Some of them, yes, they, need to, they need to combine. So that's yes, where the architecture really helps. Well, it's yes, been very sir. interesting. Uh, do you have any final words, uh, Franzel, to our people who are uh, been staying home for <laughs> almost 45 days already in their own homes? Uh, become experts in uh, TikTok <laughs> and all other forms of uh, entertainment using Zoom. Uh, what can you tell them in terms of uh, cybersecurity and uh, personal protection of their own data? Um, sir, first of all, TikTok is also a cybersecurity threat. Yes, that's what I heard. Yes, uh, yes it's an app from China. So um, if you go online and research on TikTok's vulnerabilities, sir, there's a lot. So Correct. we suggest for you to just, uh, you know, Filipino ano, sir, video okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's TikTok right. Anymore, maybe. Um, ngayon, sir, Zoom is also trying to improve their system. So maybe you can just have a been... drinking, uh, drinking session with your, but it's liquor ban, sir. So it's juice session with your friends via Zoom. So you, you can entertain themselves in a lot of ways. And... So in a nutshell, sir, just to um, state what we are trying to do for this um, IS in terms of this pandemic, we want to establish a one-stop shop. So, you know, sir, um, that's the objective. From, from the medical field is into telemedicine. Uh, you're very, very yes. familiar with that, sir. So I think yes. we are really trying to evolve into the new normal. So yes. we have to accept sir, that things will never be the same. We have to accept the fact that the new normal is coming, which is, you know, wearing of masks, social distancing, and a lot of, of, of the things that we do will be online. So also the company, sir, should also in, uh, invest into their uh, in IT infrastructures because work from home would also be a normal as well. So um, with this, sir, we wish to tell everyone to embrace technology. Um, for the young ones, sir, there would be no problem. Um, they're into technology from the very beginning. Mga baby ngayon, sir, eh, nagsiselfone na agad. Eh, nagsiselfone na agad. <laughs> but, you know, our, our medyo mga oldies natin, sir, uh, they have to, especially, sir, they are the decision makers. They have to uh, accept the fact that uh, you can never shun technology from, from how we do things now. So with that, sir, I think we had a very, very fruitful dis discussion, Dr. Ted. Um, yes, we did. We yes. from you as well, um, with, with you uh, being with us here at the NTF. And we really, really appreciate your presence here. And, you sir, sana, sana, um, the UP team will be having uh, a much bigger role in this effort that we're doing. Uh, because I'm also an alumni as well, so... <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, um, overall, sir, uh, we wish everyone um, to just enjoy your time with your families. And para dun sa mga nahihirapan, sir, so konting tiis na lang. Um, tulong tulong, sir. Ang sinasabi lagi natin, um, together, sir, we heal as one. Thank you very much, Francel. With that. Uh... I have been a doctor for 30 years and I've uh, never seen an epidemic or a pandemic handled with this much data and this much technology. It is really a his history in the making that the way we battle this COVID-19 pandemic uses technology to the utmost. And together we are discovering ourselves, we are discovering technology, we are discovering our weaknesses, and we are discovering several of our, of our strengths. With that, I thank you all. Be safe, stay home, stay safe, everyone. Thank you. This is Dr. Ted Herbosa of Health Issues, TVUP.